learning experience. Uh, it's a you know when how often do you think of yourself as Tamil or you know Malayali or Gujarati or it's not something that happens you know you don't deal with on a daily basis. But when you're from Kashmir and you're from a from again a conflict area or where people are dying. On, for the, for the, uh, where the cause of that death happen, is linked to your identity. That forces you to think about your identity. Now, yes, you know, this whole thing of um, what you ask this question of JKLM, or, it's, it's never, you know, it stems from the streets actually. They were the ones who got there in 2008, they got there out and told them, what are you doing? You better come out and lead us. They actually got, when, because most of it now, I mean, uh, of course, after 2010, they are not, most of uh, the leaders are, uh, you know, whenever there is even a little bit of, uh, which is almost regular, a little bit of an issue anywhere, they are put under uh, house arrest and are not allowed to move out. But in, in 2008, 2009, and 2010, you know, the, the streets of Kashmir like, used to full of people and they used to go and get them out and tell them, you know, to uh, come out. In one sense, for me, uh, uh, the struggle in Kashmir at the moment is for uh, not just the discovery of self identity, but the discovery of a new political economy. Uh, at a time of exertion, Kashmir was given a state special a status 317 and when all the promises associated with 317 were not kept, so they developed a sense of grievance over that. But at the same time, because of the special status, they also feel entitled to uh, things which are not given to any other uh, part of India. So it's a combination of, of both these things. You know, we are special people. Because you gave a special status, but we also have grievances, but we didn't follow any of your promises. Yes.